Okay, so hello and welcome to another episode of AJB Lockdown Chat. Uh, this week we've got a very special guest with us. Joining us today is Alex Manners. How are you today, Alex? Uh, I'm okay, thank you. Excellent, excellent. And we've got, as we all know, Andy Beeston. Hi, mate. How are you? I'm very well, mate. Very well. How are you doing? Yeah, not bad, thank you. Can't complain. Nice. Quite a, a fetching uh, blue AJB top today. Yeah, I went for the futsal one today. Like it, like it. And I'm um, a little bit. Yeah, very nice. And uh, actually, before we crack on with it, Alex, um, you're wearing a top I like quite a lot. Can you tell the viewers <laughs> about uh, whose shirt you're wearing? Yes, uh, this is uh, my local club, Solihull Moor. So this is their shirt from about three seasons ago. So I think it's something like uh, 17, um, 18 season. So yeah, it's their home shirt from then. Wow. Very smart. And I've, um, I'm, a, I'm a local Solihull boy as well. Um, and Andy, uh, we've been down before. We both went to the, yeah. to, to the Solihull Moors. And what did you call them? Just tell the audience. Um, Solihull Moors, I called them. Never, yeah. I've never called them Solihull Motors, ever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, kicked out. <laughs> We went to a match, didn't we? Weren't, were the Moors 3 0 up and lost 4 3? Definitely didn't happen. We probably just weren't steamrolled the opposition. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I remember that. That was like, you guys were like superb first half and then just got ripped to shred second half and you just felt it coming. I'm, I'm, I'm not having that. I don't, I remember the first half. So. <laughs> oh, no, so do I. <laughs> yeah. um, Right, so let's crack on. Uh, Alex, I mean, we've got you on. You've done some incredible things in, well, in your life and in the media. Um, would you like to tell the audience first a little bit about what you kind of do day to day and uh, your book and just wh- wherever you want to start, really? So I present, I'm 23 and I've got Asperger's, which is a form of autism. And I go all over the UK presenting talks all about my life living with Asperger's, um, what it was like at school, why I look upon it as something positive. So I presented to loads of companies, um, insurance companies, universities, schools, councils, loads of places like that. And last year, so in 2019, I published my first ever book, which is called That's Not Right, My Life Living with Asperger's. Um, Mm -hmm. And it's unbelievable now, like when it first came through the post, my first ever book, it was unbelievable. That's, 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 fun. I'd love to be a published author. I've got to say, I've got to say, um, how long did it take to write? Well, it took about a few months, so probably only four months. The reason being is because mm-hmm. a lot of the stuff uh, that's in the book, a lot of the information was already sort of written down in different places okay. uh, or in talks that I'd presented. So I kind of just moved it all, collated everything and moved it across into the book. So it probably took me longer to then actually get it published than it did to actually write it in the first place. What what inspired the book? What inspired you to write a book? The thing that inspired me actually was, uh, I was writing an article for, I think it was a magazine or a newspaper about my Asperger's. And I said to my dad, um, basically, do you have any information about the things that went on at school, um, all the fighting that he did to get me the support that I I had? And I thought he was gonna give me like one little file. And he gave me like two full toy boxes of everything that happened at school. All the problems I've had and everything, and I thought this can't, this won't fit into an article. I need to write a book yeah. all about this, um, just to show people what it's really like to live and go to school with Asperger's and, and autism. Wow, oh, I bet it's it's a fantastic thing to do, and I, I've got to admit that I, I don't know that much about it, um, and I'm not sure if people watching will. So. Um, I'm guessing the uh, the trajectory of the book as well is kind of a, a day-to-day life routine with Asperger's. Yeah, it's sort of the book starts off from when I was first diagnosed and how I got diagnosed and sort of goes through my life to where I am now and the things that I'm doing. But I think that the three main, well, some of the main things I wanted to get out of the book and why I wanted to write it was to show people exactly what it's like to have Asperger's at school and some of the challenges that people can face at school. Uh, Also, what it's like living with Asperger's on a day-to-day basis. And also, um, I wanted to inspire people and show them that just because you've got Asperger's or autism, you know, don't let that hold you back from what you want to achieve. Because I've always looked upon the positives of it. And I think with a book, um, I mean, with the talks that I do, they can only really be done in the UK. 
Whereas with my book, you know, I, I sell them in America, in Australia. So anyone from over the world who are going through similar things to me will have access to read my book and be inspired by what I'm writing about. Yeah. Awesome. That is, that is absolutely brilliant. We, um, we actually interviewed someone a few weeks back called Chris Bright and he lives with uh, diabetes and he ha he's got that kind of same focus that he just wants to raise awareness and just tell people about what it's like day to day. But um, the similarity between you and Chris, I think is fantastic. It's that you've got that drive to do it. You, I mean, it must be, I, I don't know what it's like living with Asperger's, but to live with it and then go, but I'm going to go an extra step. I'm going to write a book. I'm going to get out there, do talks. I'm going to really focus on raising awareness. It's, it's a, I'm sure it's a lot of effort and a lot of kind of time that you put into it. Yeah, it is. I mean, but I think because a lot of people with Asperger's, you know, maybe aren't that confident at communicating um, about what it's like to live with. And because I am confident at communicating uh, well about what it's like to live with, and I'm, I'm never nervous sort of standing in front of people, hundreds of people and speaking about it. I think, you know, I want to use that to actually help others. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons um, why I'm so driven to actually raise awareness for Asperger's. That's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Um, uh, do you have a, a website that people can go to if they're kind of looking for help and advice or what, what kind of contact points do you have? Yeah, so I've got a website. It's www.thealexmanners.com. Um, and then I've got all the social media. So LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, and then if people want to have a look at my book, then they can go to Amazon as well. Right, brilliant. And you can actually buy it on Amazon right now. Yeah, on Amazon. It's in paperback or Kindle. And there's also a link to my book on my website as well. Brilliant. Absolutely oh. amazing. Um, I was actually looking on your website. Um, something that intrigued me. You've got a bit of a passion for bright clothes. Is that true? Yeah, that's definitely true. <laughs> what, what, what drives that passion? I think the thing that all started it was um, my one granddad. He used to wear like really brightly colored, like bright red blazers, okay. shirts and ties. And because I used to get on with him so well, that sort of inspired me to wear them. And as I've grown up, when I went to school, you had to wear a lot of like grays and blacks. Yeah. And because I didn't like school and it, school always felt like a prison, kind of wearing grays and blacks reminds me of school. So when I'm wearing colorful clothes, it reminds me of all the happy times I've had like with my granddad and things. And I don't know, I've just, Ever since I've been young, I've always sort of loved anything brightly coloured. No, does that, does that um, transcend into football kits? Do you find yourself yeah. attracted to like the outrageously luminous away kits that some teams have? Yeah, it's funny because you have like, I've seen books where it's like the 50 worst kits of all time. And I'm thinking, hang on a minute. Like these are all my favourite ones. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. You should have grew up in the 90s. Oh my day. Sheffield United had some outrage, and they still do. Bright, illuminous yellow, illuminous yeah. orange. We had a big square checkered purple and yellow shirt that I've still got. <laughs> they're so bad, but brilliant. It's the, they're, they're for those ones, they're just, they're awfully fantastic. Do, do you remember, or Alex, have you come across the, um, I'm going to call it mid 90s, Chelsea Away kit? It's grey and orange. orange. Yeah. Sponsor. I mean, in my head, it couldn't get any worse. <laughs> yeah, that, that's sort of like a weird one for me because I don't like the colour grey, yet orange is one of my favourite colours, so I'm sort of like torn with that one. Yeah. Right, yeah. I, I, remember that. I, I like your, uh, your glasses as well. They're wicked. Glasses got the yeah, orange. Yeah, they're the orange as well. The Solio shirt is nice and bright. Yeah, I think that's probably why I like them so much because they wear bright colours. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, I'm just going to go back to the kind of autism, um, Asperger's, and it's, um, it's part of it, you, you like a structured routine day by day. Yeah, that's okay. right. Um, so I was just going to hit on, obviously, going into lockdown now, that impacted on everyone's life quite a lot. How are you finding your, your normal routine or how are you coping? What are the changes you're having to make? So at the start of the lockdown, it was really difficult because sort of everything that I was doing sort of changed within the space of like a few days. So all my plans went out the window. Um, <clears throat> but what I've been, and I've been suffering with a bit of anxiety about everything being changed. And I think one of the hardest things is not having any solid 
information about when I'll be able to go back to football matches, go back to doing talks, go and see my family. I think that's one of the hardest things. Um, but as the lockdown's gone on uh, and we're now allowed to meet people, um, obviously I'm going on walks with some of my friends and family. I'm now playing golf as well. So it, it's got easy, it's been easier to cope with as the weeks have gone on. But it's definitely sort of been a struggle. Um, and I think one of the things I've done throughout the lockdown is try to keep as many things from my normal routine the same in my new lockdown routine. And that's been helping me um, a lot to sort of plan my days as well and plan what I'm going to be doing. Right. Interesting. And what, what does um, a, a normal lockdown day look like for you at the moment? So at the moment, it's sort of, I try and do my work in the morning. So uh, whether that's sending out emails, doing talk, uh, talks online, um, writing things, uh, videos, things like that. Um, and then in the afternoon, I kind of focus on things that are good for me mentally. So going on walks. Um, I've also started quite a lot of projects. So at the start of lockdown, I started a few different projects, um, sorting out our garage, painting some of the things in the garden, furniture, so that the projects would take my mind off worrying about the lockdown and they'd give me something to focus on. So um, that's the kind of my routine. So sort of like work in the morning and then things that help me to keep my mental health in check sort of in the afternoon. Yeah. And uh, mental health obviously is massive at the moment. Um, but that, that all sounds really positive, the way you've kind of approached it and how you've organised your day like that. Um, I mean, what, what would your one piece of advice be to anyone who's maybe struggling in lockdown? I think one of the biggest pieces of advice that I would give people is, or two maybe, uh, one is, you know, a lot of people will be achieving lots of great things during the lockdown. You know, they might achieve lots uh, work-wise. Um, they might learn a new skill and, you, you know, learn how to bake, learn how to sew or something like that. But it doesn't matter if you don't achieve anything like that. As long as, as long as you're making sure that you're safe and healthy and your mental health is in check. And that's really the most important thing. You know, if that means watching your favorite movies, uh, TV shows, reading books every day, then as long as you come through, through this period um, positively, then I think that's one of the most important pieces of advice um, I can give really. I agree with that. I see a lot of that on... Um online people being being productive which is a wonderful thing and then you see the other side where people are saying look however you've got through this that's good yeah it's it's your own battle i love the um the sentence or the little meme i saw on one of the things that we follow was um we're not all in the same boat but we are all in the same storm and i think that's a wonderful way of putting it that we are all in the same battle we're just all dealing with it in different ways we've all got our own mini battles going on and how we get through it is is the best way. You come out healthy, you come out positively, it's successful. That's the most important thing. And I think, you know, I'm looking at all the positives from the lockdown. So when this is over, I'll be able to think, right, I've achieved this, this, and this. Um, and, you know, I would say as well, just try and look upon the positives come out of this. Don't focus on the negatives. Because, that, you know, like you say, everyone's um, struggled with the lockdown. It's been a challenge for everyone. But, you know, look 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 for the positives um in the situation in, in you know there are always positives in a negative situation there is absolutely you got to find them i love that that's a fantastic um fantastic attitude and one that i definitely share with you there there's always positives just got to search for them sometimes that is awesome uh you you mentioned uh, i just briefly touch on this you mentioned watching movies and things Always a good lockdown question. What are, uh, what are your picks for, I don't know, Netflix or whatever streaming service you've been using? What's your go-to series? Um, well, it's funny. Um, one, one of the, or two of the things I've been watching the most during lockdown are on Amazon Prime. One is um, <clears throat> a program called, uh, you've probably heard of it, called Food, I think it's called Food Unwrapped. Okay. <laughs> Um, it's not the one on like Channel Four or whatever, is it? I was going to say, yeah, that's not on Netflix actually. That's on um, one of the other BBC iPlayer or Channel Four or something. But I'll be watching that quite a lot. Right. And then I've been watching quite a few movies on Netflix, like football movies. So I've watched one called United, um, oh. all about the Munich air disaster. And then oh. another one that I watched was called Bobby, all about um, Bobby Moore, which was really good. So I've been watching quite a few like sort of football movies as well. Yeah, love things like that. I love, I love seeing behind the, behind the lifestyle. We have these chats all the time, Jimmy, where you realise football stars, movie stars, sports stars, 
they're people. They're yeah. people going through the same things that we go through. You just don't see that. You just see the glory side. You see the tip of the iceberg, so to speak. It's everything underneath you don't see and you don't know. And it's, it's easy to forget that side of people sometimes. Definitely. But it's fascinating to learn. Yeah. Uh, have you seen the Maradona documentary? I haven't seen that. Um, I watched one on Ronaldo the other day, a little sort of hour-long documentary on... Um, I think it was Amazon, I think. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I saw that one. So we had that chat, didn't we, Jimmy? Yeah. It portray, portrays Ronaldo in a very positive way, but I think the thing I took out of it is that most is his dedication is just second to none. He is... Oh, yeah. like, and he deserves everything he gets. Yeah. If he's willing to dedicate every second of his life to be the best, then he's the best. Yeah. No, no one can take that away from him. It's If we want it to be, we should be as well. We're as dedicated as him. We could achieve as much as him. Granted, there's the nature, nurture yeah, level of ability that he was born naturally with talent, but his hard work and, I mean, moving from Madeira to Lisbon at, what, 11? Did he move 11? How young he was. Yeah, 11, he moved away from home. I mean, straight away. At 11, I wasn't moving away from home. You I are. wouldn't have even considered that. So yeah, the yeah. Fact he's done that to pursue his career straight away. He's, yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Ronaldo fan. I think he's, um, he, he's pretty, pretty special. Yeah, I'm a fan now. Yeah. Didn't you say, but you, can, you can't not be, as you say, with his dedication. So. Yeah, he's a, he's a great role model. Um, what we're going to do is we're, we're going to look at wrapping this up, Alex, and then we're going to come back with part two for the audience where you're going to discuss maybe more of your love for football and some of the amazing things that you've done, uh, visiting grounds, collecting shirts, programs. You've done, you've done a lot in the football sphere. Looking so forward. Have, um, a whole chat about that. Uh, final thing before we go, I want to say um, two things. One, um, my brother used to teach you. Is that correct? That's correct, yes. That's so a little sound bite. What do you think of him? <laughs> well, he's a good teacher, to be honest. Pardon? No, I enjoy the lessons. Uh, okay, okay. Can we edit that? Can we, as, as he's about to answer then, can we edit it? And yes. just say, that you thought your brother was rubbish. Yeah, we'll, we'll get his real answer off camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and really, um, to finish up on the uh, Asperger side of what you do and what you to, uh, talk about, um, what would be your one, one kind of piece of information? And I know you told about where people can go to find you. Um, what would you say first, first point of contact for someone who's watching this, maybe would like some help and advice, where should they go first just to kind of get in touch or have a look at your advice? Yeah, um, I think the best port of call is my website, which is um, thealexmanners.com, because everything I do uh, is on there and all my links to my social media, if they want to get in touch with me, um, is on there. So that's the main place you can funnel out then to all your different... Yeah, everything, everything about me you can find on my website, really. Absolutely okay. perfect. Like okay. That. Well, thank you very much, Alex, and uh, we'll be seeing you soon for part two.